Welcome to the Orange County Historical Museum's new exhibit, Yesa, Journeys of the Okanichi. We'd like to express our sincere appreciation to the Okanichi Band of the Saponi Nation for their support and assistance in putting this exhibit together. Yesa is a Tutelo Saponi word which means the people. The Yesa formed numerous bands, including the Eno, Monacan, Shikori, Tutelo, Saponi, and Okanichi. Yet, they were one people, united by common ancestors and customs. This exhibit showcases the Okanichi. It examines the journeys they made over time, both physically and culturally. Although the Yesa were often unnoticed by others, they have always been an integral part of Orange County history. Journey One. The Yesa came from the West. Following rivers and the migratory paths of animals, they crossed the Appalachian Mountains. They lived in a beautiful, unspoiled land. It was made up almost entirely of hardwood and pine forests that spread over gently rolling hills. Today, we call this the Piedmont. The Yesa adapted to their landscape. They made shelters, clothing, and tools out of wood, stone, animal hides, and bone. They ate wild game, along with various native plants. Journey two. Around 1000 BCE, the Yesa began farming. They settled in fertile areas near rivers. Managing their environment, the Yesa cleared land and built palisaded villages. By 1200 AD, they were cultivating the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash. Many of Orange County's earliest Yesa artifacts date from 1400 to 1600 AD. They were excavated at the wall site, a place along a bend in the Eno River, east of Hillsborough. Archaeologists believe that the site covered 1.25 acres and was occupied by a group of 100 to 150 people. The village was a ring of houses around an open plaza. Since archaeologists found no evidence of central support post holes, they believe the houses were made by fastening mats, skins, or bark over frames of poles. Trade developed among the Yesa, along paths connecting the many villages. The primary route became known as the Great Trading Path. It approximates the route of Interstate 85. Goods exchanged included salt, fish, and seashells from coastal areas, hardwoods, minerals, and deer hides from the woodlands, bearskins, copper, and mica from the mountains. Contact with Europeans began in the 1560s with the arrival of the Spanish. English traders arrived in the 1650s. Europeans supplied guns, hatchets, kettles, metal tools, woolen cloth, glass items, and liquor. In return, they wanted deer hides. Deer hides were so valuable that buckskins were often used as currency and is probably the reason that today we call a dollar a buck. Finer and more flexible than cowhide, deerskin was prized in Europe during the 1600s and 1700s. Gloves and breeches were the most common garments made from deer leather, but jerkins, waistcoats, and hats were also made from deer hides. The Yesa traveled by foot. They had no indigenous draft animals and in Orange County, the Eno River was too rocky and winding to support travel by boat. 
Some members of the Eno and Okanichi tribes hired themselves out as porters, first to their cousins in neighboring tribes, and then to Europeans. A porter's load was typically between 50 and 80, 80 pounds. By 1650, the Okanichi were living on a beautiful island in the Roanoke River, near present-day Clarksville, Virginia. Due to their strategic location in the center of the Great Trading Path, the Okanichi controlled regional trade. They enforced this dominance through warfare and intimidation. The Iroquois were the Okanichi's primary economic and military rivals. In 1670, German explorer John Lederer visited with the Okanichi and wrote, Upon the North Shore they yearly reap great crops of corn, of which they always have a twelve months provision aforehand against an invasion from their powerful neighbors. Their government is under two kings, one presiding in arms, the other in hunting and husbandry. They hold all things except their wives, in common, and their custom in eating is that every man in his turn feasts all the rest, and he that makes the entertainment is seated betwixt the two kings. Journey 3 In 1676, a group of Virginia settlers led by Nathaniel Bacon attacked the Okanichi. As many as 300 Okanichi died in the massacre. With fewer warriors to protect them, the Okanichi suffered repeated deadly assaults from the Iroquois. For safety, most of the tribe left their island home and moved south. By 1696, a group of Okanichi were living in Orange County among the Eno people. The Okanichi lived along the Eno River near the sites of previous Yesa settlements. Archaeologists from the University of North Carolina began excavating the area in the 1980s. The archaeologists named the site after Frank Frederick, owner of the property in Hillsborough at the time of the dig. The Okanichi called their town Okanahawan. It was a palisaded village of 10 to 12 houses. The village was home to between 50 and 75 people. Structures included a central fire pit, sweat lodge, storage pits, and three separate cemeteries. Like their ancestors, the Okanichi oiled their skin with bear oil and wore garments made from animal hides. They styled themselves with feathers and paint. Despite contact with Europeans, the Okanichi diet remained traditional. Supplies were abundant. The Okanichi predominantly ate venison, corn, beans, squash, wild nuts, and berries. The only European plants added to their diet were watermelon and peaches. When English explorer John Lawson visited the Okanichi in 1701, he noted, their cabins were hung with a good sort of tapestry as fat bear and barbecued or dried venison, no Indians having greater plenty of provisions than these. Trade between native people and the English peaked during this period. From 1709 to 1720, a plague destroyed European cattle herds, increasing the demand for deerskin leather. At the same time, the arms race that had begun in the 1660s between the Okanichi, the Iroquois, and other adversarial tribes heightened their need for guns. Items found at the Frederick site attest to the Okanichi's commercial activities with the English and other tribes. They included metal axes, spoons, scissors, knives, 
and tobacco pipes. After Bacon's rebellion, English traders assumed a greater role in regional fairs, and the Okanichi lost their edge. Consequently, cargo moved now on horseback instead of by foot. Journey 4 The Okanichi's survival was continually threatened by unscrupulous colonial traders, European diseases, fighting with other tribes, and alcoholism. With the hope of protection, they signed a treaty in 1713 with the Virginia colony. Along with 200 to 300 members of other Yesa tribes, the Okanichi moved to a 36 square mile reservation in Virginia, which they called Junkata Purse, or Horse's Head. They built a palisaded village and continued farming, hunting, and trading much as they had in the previous years. At this time, however, the tribes collectively became known as the Saponi Nation because the Saponi had the largest number, uh, the significant number of, of tribal members at that time. In 1714, Virginia Governor Alexander Spotswood began construction on a fort near the reservation to serve as a protected space for trade between the colonists and the Saponi. Deadly confrontations between native people and colonial settlers had escalated in 1711 with the Tuscarora War. Trade had been impaired for many years. To revitalize the commerce, Governor Spotswood established the Virginia Indian Company in 1714. It had the sole privilege of operating a trading post at the fort. Spotswood was quite different from most of his contemporaries. He abhorred the mistreatment of native people and insisted that Indians never attacked without provocation. Spotswood hoped to Christianize the Indians and assimilate them into English society. The Virginia governor hired Charles Griffin as schoolmaster for an Indian school at the fort. And Spotswood personally paid Griffin's salary for the first year. Interestingly, the Indian school at Fort Christiana was associated with the College of William and Mary, which also operated an Indian school. Charles Griffin had lived in North Carolina and was the first known teacher in the colony. Although no church building was located at Fort Christiana, the 1713 treaty required the Saponi to be converted to Christianity. In October 1715, Spotswood wrote that there were 70 Indian children under Griffin's care, most of whom can already say the Lord's Prayer and the Creed. Three months later, the number was listed at 100. Spotswood considered this a, quite a good victory. Spotswood tried to protect the Saponi from the mistreatment of colonial traders who used alcohol to pay unfair prices. Unlike most of his contemporaries he be who believed in hereditary heathenism, Spotswood did not. He insisted that Indian children should be baptized. His political rival was William Byrd. Byrd wanted to be governor and tried to embarrass Spotswood and um, hurt his chances of, of continuing as, as governor. Colonel Byrd called Indians barbaric and argued that they could never be civilized. However, if you do some research into uh, Byrd and um, find out more about his life, you might be inclined to um, believe that it was Byrd himself who was the one who was barbaric. He was a slave no owner and was known for being particularly cruel to his slaves. 
In addition, he was also noted for being very cruel to his own children. In 1728, Byrd led an expedition to determine the dividing line between Virginia and North Carolina. He wrote in his account of the journey that Saponi men were disagreeably lazy and called the rape of a Saponi woman good sport. Byrd used his charisma and connections to end funding for the fort. He claimed that Spotswood had created a public monopoly which was hurting private enterprise and that he was using government money allotted to the Indian school to build a mansion for himself. This theme would be echoed um, of about 50 uh, or 40 years later um, when, um, with the regulator movement when the regulators accused Governor Tryon of using public money to build a mansion for himself. Journey 5. Because of Byrd's antagonism, Fort Christiana was closed in 1717. After 1730, the Saponi split off. Some remained in the area, some joined the Iroquois in the north, others migrated back and forth to the Catawbas in the south. During the American Revolution, a loyalist faction moved north to live among the Iroquois. Those who supported American independence remained in the border area of Virginia and North Carolina. Journey 6. After the Revolutionary War, the Okanichi faced increased threats from American settlers who wanted tribal lands. Some Okanichi, who were associated with the Quakers, moved to Ohio and Indiana. Around 60 to 90 Okanichi families migrated south to lands in northern Orange and southern Caswell counties. In 1849, much of this area became Pleasant Grove Township in Alamance County. The community in Pleasant Grove became known as Texas. Some say the area was called Texas because the people there looked similar to Hispanics. Others claim that the name was derived from lawlessness, reminiscent of the Wild West. Until the 1940s, the area known as Texas was comprised almost entirely of related families. Most owned land, and some had substantial holdings. Census data from the 1830s recorded a population of around 275. However, as the Okanichi thrived in the area, their population grew. A 1938 news article listed the population as approximately 1,500 and stated that there were 122 farms with over 6,400 in acreage. A farming community. Like their neighbors, the Okanichi became commercial farmers, changing their environment to produce cash crops. Tobacco was the primary crop. It remains important among community members who still farm. The community came together for corn shuckings, hog killings, and group hunting for turkey and rabbits. Like other rural communities, businesses developed to support the farms, providing essential equipment for the field and house. General stores were located at major intersections on roads. Another source of employment was the many textile mills in Orange and Alamance counties. Indoor activities revolved around the schools and churches, which were located only a few yards apart in the heart of the community, as was the Masonic Lodge. Several small schools served the children of the area. The first school, built in 1840, was a small log structure. 
But by 1938, the community school was so large, it engaged 13 teachers. Circuit riding preachers provided religious guidance until the turn of the century when two churches were constructed. Jeffrey's Cross Church and Martin's Baptist Church were both named for the families who donated the land on which they were built. Loss of Identity In North Carolina, Native Americans were documented in government records as black, mulatto, colored, or Negro, and not as Indians. This was true for the census, for birth records, for death certificates. This led to a loss of identity. And after the Indian Removal Act of 1830, tribal members faced terrible consequences for being identified as Indian. Because it was dangerous, many parents told their children to keep their identity a secret. Racism. Most of North Carolina's laws that restricted the rights of free blacks also applied to Indians. Beginning in 1816, these laws prohibited carrying a gun, joining the militia, meeting, preaching, or dancing in public, as well as testifying in court, except against each other and sitting on a jury. During the Reconstruction years, the KKK in Orange, Alamance, and Caswell counties conducted a reign of terror against all people of color. In 1869, Cyrus Guy, who was Okanichi, was lynched by the Klan in Orange County. In 1870, North Carolina Governor William Holden declared Alamance and Caswell counties to be in a state of insurrection due to Klan violence. The Okanichi fought back as best they could. They tried to subvert some of these racist laws. In the 1850s, Abner Burnett was twice found guilty for carrying a gun in violation of Orange and Alamance County's black laws. In 1842, Parker Jeffries sued for the right to vote as a free person of color. Jeffries lived in Ohio. The Ohio, the Supreme Court of Ohio, found that Jeffries was indeed entitled to vote because he was of Indian and white ancestry. Challenges. Over time, the Okanichi lost or sold their land. Tobacco farming no longer provided sustainable income and the textile mills closed. The formerly prosperous community stores lost their customers to big box and chain outlets. By the early 1980s, the Okanichi faced the prospect of full assimilation and cultural extinction. Many tribal members knew they were Indian, but did not know the tribe to which they belong. At this time, Forrest Hazel became curious about the ethnicity of his friends, and he began conducting research. He shared his findings among tribal members and published papers. Hazel's initiative emboldened others to become more active in preserving tribal ways. Journey 7. Although many Okanichi moved to more urban areas for greater op economic opportunities, locally, the tribe experienced a cultural resurgence. Today, the tribe is a vibrant and effectual community organization. One of the first activities that the Okanichi 
organized in the 80s and held was a powwow. They realized that they had been gathering as a community for harvest celebrations and church revivals for hundreds of years, and the powwow seemed like a logical extension of these community gatherings. The powwow is a spiritual event. It represents pride in heritage marked by homecoming of family, community engagement, and honoring veterans. It celebrates connections to tradition, spirituality, and Mother Earth. The Okanichi wanted the state to correctly identify them as a living tribe with a long, distinct history. Therefore, in 1990, the tribe submitted a petition for state recognition. The battle for recognition required years of research, paperwork, and lobbying. Finally, in February of 2002, the Okanichi Band of the Saponi Nation became the state's eighth recognized Indian tribe. In 1996, members of the Okanichi Band of the Saponi Nation began building a replica of Okanahawan. They selected a site in Hillsborough near the Eno River. The purpose of the village was to serve as an educational tool for the community. Although this original replica village was taken down, a new one was recently constructed, and if you visit Hillsborough, you can visit a, the replica of Okanahawan. In August 2002, the Okanichi Band of the Zaponi Nation undertook another impressive project, buying back a portion of their ancestral lands in Alamance County and building a community center. For the first time in over 250 years, the Okanichi owned land as a tribe. This site includes ceremonial ground, a tribal museum, administrated offices and meeting area, a reconstructed 1701 Okanichi village, and 1880s era farm, and an orchard with heirloom fruit. The complex serves not only tribal members, but is also open to the general public. Thank you for watching this slideshow. We hope that you will visit the museum to see the many incredible artifacts that accompany this information.